All right. So we are on, as we mentioned, we're on Daftet Amud Bet. And uh, let's go back to the Mishnah and just have a look quickly again. We're dealing with, now we're getting into some of the details of the Arei Miklat themselves. If until now we've spoken about what are the scenarios, what are the cases in which one would have to go to an Arei Miklat, who would have to go to an Arei Miklat in terms of um, you know, what actually transpired, in terms of which individuals. Um, now we're dealing with uh, the, some of the details of these Arim themselves, where they are, etc. So says the Mishnah, rather about... Hey, my time is low. Could I just ask you one question before we start? Sure. The Arim Miklat are for people who've been judged, and they've decided that it was Beshagag and they go to an Arim Miklat. But what happens to the people when they're arrested? You oh, seem so to imply last week that when they're arrested, they go to the Arim Miklat until they're, and then they're, then they're judged. Is that what happens? There's two separate groups of people that go there. Correct, correct. We're going to see that now. We're going to see that in the Mishnah as well. And it's going to help us understand something puzzling in the Gemara as well. Great question. We'll see, we'll see the answer to that in just a moment. So, so the Mishnah begins, again, we're on Daftet Amabet, probably about seven lines down from the wide lines where it starts. And we have the beginning of the Mishnah, which says, Leichan Golim. To where does this take place? This uh, exile, Are Miklat, to the Are Miklat. Where are these Are Miklat? We're going to talk about this in a moment. Um, the fact that there are three, three Are Miklat on Ever Yaden, and also three on uh, in, inside Eretz Canaan. Now that's a little bit strange. Because we know that in Eretz Canaan is where nine and a half of the Shvatim were, and there were only two and a half Shvatim in uh, Ever Hayaden. And yet, you have the same uh, number of cities for both. Um, the Gemara is going to ask that question, and we'll answer. The Gemara's answer is, in fact, not so straightforward. A lot, lot of different uh, opinions in the Rishonim. We'll, we'll, we'll mention some of them. But in any event, says the Mishnah, we have three cities in the Ever Hayaden and three in Eretz Canaan. Shnema. Right, in other words, is only once you had all six cities that had been set aside, only once all six had been designated that uh, these halachot would apply. So even though the three Ever Yaden was set aside by Moshe Rabbeinu before before Bnei Israel went into Eretz, Eretz Canaan proper. Um, it was only after the 14 years of Kibush and Chalukah, of conquest and dividing the land, when those other three cities were, were, were designated, that all six began to began to operate. Right, you know, my, uh, uh, And from the Psukim, because it says three and three, and then it's then to teach us this halacha. Lo ayu shalosh shebeva yaden kotot shneema shesh ali miklati yena ad sheyu shesh tan kotot keachat. Right, it would only be when you have six. That is when they would uh, uh, absorb. That is when they would uh, with halacha would apply. Um, Rabbi Kennisberg, your sound is breaking up. Umchumanot lendrachim. Sorry, sorry about that. Um. Now, can everybody hear me? I guess not. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure. The internet connection seems to be unstable for some reason. Okay. We'll try and uh, see if this works. Okay. We'll try again. If you, if you can't hear me, if I need to go back, please let me know. But hopefully this will, uh, hopefully this will work. So. Right, so so mechuvanot lahen drachim mizolezo the uh, that we have uh, the roads from one from one to another, meaning these cities have to be made easily accessible. Shenema tachin lecha haderech v'shilashta v'gomer. Right, that that uh, you have to prepare the way there, meaning we don't want people to get uh, stuck and to be killed by the goel adam on the way. We want them to have the opportunity to get to these cities. Umosrin lahen shnei tamirech hachamim shemay agenu baderech v'dabo elav. So we discussed this last time. We said how they, they he's accompanied with somebody asked why why is he not accompanied by bodyguards? But we said uh, the, the, the halacha which the Mishnah teaches is that he's accompanied by two Tavidei Chachamim on the way to the Irmiklat. 
in case should the Goel Adam come and try to kill him, that uh, these Tamirei Chachamim will speak to him and they will try and appease him and they'll try to explain to him it was all an accident and it's okay and, and please don't kill this uh, Rotzeach Bishogeg. Um, or according to the second opinion in the Mishnah, Rabbi Meir, he says, even he would try and uh, convince, uh, you know, appease the person himself. Rabbi Yossi Bar Yudal Meir, and this is, Jeffrey, this is to your point. Rabbi Yossi Bar Yudal Meir, but chila echad shogeg vechad mezid, makdimin l'arei miklat. So initially, once the murder happens, or once the killing happens, right before uh, it's been tried in Beit Din, whether it was mezid, whether it was shogeg, anybody who has killed somebody else runs uh, to the Ir Miklat, and he takes refuge there. And then Beitin Shochino Mevino to Misham. Beitin bring him back from there. They bring him out for the to come to uh, to come to trial, right? If he's found to be guilty in such a way that he's chayev mita, right? Bemezid with edim and atra'a, then he is executed. If he's not, uh, if he's not chayev mita, he is uh, exempt. He's, he's allowed to go free. The implication there, in a case where he's not chayev mita and he's not chayev galut. And if they find it was b'shogeg in such a way that he's required to go back into galut, so then machzirin otolim kumo, then they just send him back to that ir miklat, shneema vashivoto aedal ir miklato. And that's meant out from the pasuk. Okay, so says the Gemara, Tan Rabbanan, shalosh arim yivdil Moshe be'eva yaden, uknegdan yivdil Yoshua ba'elitz kanan. Okay, for those who may be joining late, we are on daftet amud bet, the beginning of the Gemara, so five lines, six lines from the bottom of the page. Tan Rabbanan says the writer, Shalosh Arim Yivdil Moshe Beva Yaden. There were three cities, which as we've already mentioned, Moshe Rabbeinu designated on Eva Hayarden. Uchenegdan Yivdil Yoshua Beelitz Kanan. And parallel to them were the three, which later on Yoshua set aside in Eretz Kanan. Umuchuvanot Ayukum in Shtei Shorot Sheba Kelim. They were aligned. They were aligned like two rows. You have in a vineyard. So you have these two rows of cities, one on the west side of the Jordan River, one on the east side of the Jordan River, but they are parallel to each other. Hebron be Yehuda, Keneged Betzeh Bamidbar, Shechem Bar Lefraim, Keneged Lamot Bagilad, Kadesh Bar Naftali, Keneged Golan Babashan. Okay, so those are the six cities, each one in the area where it is and which city it is uh, parallel to. Vashilashta says the... Says the uh, uh, Torah, that they should be split up in three. Right. In other words, that it is um, that it, that is equidistant, right, uh, between the places. You'll notice, although it says v'shilashta, v'shilashta here actually means that the land is split up. The distances really split up into four. Let's put it up into three, right? Because we don't have the cities at the borders, meaning it, the, the way the, the Gemara explains over here, it says Midarom. So from the southernmost border until the first city, until Hebron, then you have from Hebron to Shechem, so that's the second area. Then you have from Shechem to Kadesh, is the third area. And then um, from Kadesh to the northernmost border, that's the fourth area. So each of those four areas is the same uh, distance between them between between the cities. Um, okay. Now says the Gemara last just on the last line, the Eva Yaden Klat, the Elit Yisrael Klat. So this is what we mentioned in the Mishnah. Very, very puzzling question here. It says you have three on Eva Yaden and you have three in Eretz Yisrael. Okay, that's it. The Gemara here doesn't spell out the question, but 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 as we mentioned, you have nine and a half Shvatim on the west. And only two and a half on the east. Why do you have the same number? We've just explained that these uh, cities have to be spread out evenly. They have to be spread out equally, so that wherever the murder takes place, the person has equal access to go and to uh, and to uh, and, and to flee. So we would think that you'd have more cities on the west than you'd have on the east. Why do you have the same amount? So says Abaye, Amar Abaye, Begilad Shchichei Rotzchim. He says in the Gilad, which is on the Ever Yaden, there were Shrikhe Rotskin, that it was more common. Uh, murders were much more prevalent over there, just over the Amud, it's, uh, over the Daf, really. It says, Dichtev, Gilad, Kiryat Poale Aven, Akuva Midam. So this is the Pasuk, referring to the Gilad, the Pasuk in, in uh, Sefer Hoshea, 
from the Navi, but he talks about the area of Gilad, it's a place of Polay Aved, meaning people that are performing uh, misdeeds, right? It's Akuva Midam. What does Akuva Midam mean? Says the Gemara, my Akuva Midam, Amara Bielazar, Chayu Okvin Laharog Nefashot. That they would, the, the, the word Okev is like you, um, you, you sort of ambush, right? They would ambush, they would go to, to, to kill people, meaning lots and lots of, of uh, uh, killing was taking place, lots of crime, lots of murder was taking place in the Gilad. And therefore, because there were more uh, murders and more deaths taking place there, they needed uh, proportionally a higher number of Arei Miklat. So let's just look at Rashi for a moment and then we'll explain. So go back to Daftet Amud Bet, the last line in Rashi. He says, Ever higher than lat, just explaining the question. But to me, ah, this is uh, right, asking it with uh, amazement. Binachalat shne shvatim shalosh, kumo binachalat asara shvatim. The fact that you have in the nachala of two shvatim, three cities, just like you have in the nachala of uh, ten shvatim, the same. Right, interesting that Rashi says dafka two and ten versus two and a half or nine and a half. But in any event, Bagilat, it says Shehib Eva Hayaden, Shechei Rotzchim. That which is on the other side of the Yaden, there are more, more um, murders. Now, the question over here is the question which all the Rishonim ask is the following that who goes into the Yermiklat? The Yermiklat is there for, yes, it's true, the Torah called them, called them Rotzeach, um, but it's a Rotzeach Bishogeg. It's somebody who accidentally killed somebody. Over here, the clear implication with a, from the, with the Pasuk and the way the Gemara says it, when it says rotzchim, that there are more murders taking place, more murders taking place seems to be intentional murders. But amazing. So the fact that there are more intentional murders taking place, um, okay, that's not very good, but what has that got to do with the Irmiklat? It seems to be irrelevant because the Irmiklat, the people who go there are the people who, who murder accidentally. So how has the Gemara answered, un, answered anything? That's the question, right? We want to know why on the on the Aden, which is an area which has a smaller population, that you have the same amount of Aremi Klat for people to run to, to flee who murdered accidentally, the Shogeg, answers the Gemara, because over there you have more people that, that, are, that murder Bamezid. What's one got to do with the other? It seems to be seems to be irrelevant. It surely so it's also, Surely it would seem to be that the distance is the deciding factor because how far, you know, people can travel, so you've got to have them sort of equidistant. And the fact is, if there are more, you can always have a bigger Aremi clot. The Aremi clots are not defined in the size that they are, so you can always have a bigger Aremi clot, but it's the distance between them that is, I think is the relevant feature. You say, you, you're saying that because they're equidistant, people could still, could still travel across? Now I'm saying that uh, the question is, why should you have three when you've only got two and a half tribes? And here you've got three in Eretz uh, Yisrael, uh, where, you've, where you've got nine and a half tribes. Uh, and the question is, surely it, it should be better. I'm saying it's not the, it, I don't think it's the question of the volume of the people. I think it's the accessibility and therefore it's the distance between them that is relevant. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, so, so it could be that perhaps if we say that it's a smaller area, maybe that the that that maybe the population will not take up as much, would not be as as spread out, and therefore it could be equidistant in in, in a smaller area. I mean, I, the Gemara's the the, the Gemara's question seems to imply that uh, you know there should be that, that, that there should be less. Um, you're saying how how could it be as uh, as uh, as accessible if the if the people are spread out? Um, but a, a, a good murderer, though, yeah. would try to do things so it looks like it's an accident. <laughs> so because there's more murderers in Gilad, they they try to figure out, hey, maybe you'll, I'll do it in such a way so it looks like Shogeg. Okay, so you say like the Ramban. You say like the Ramban. The Ramban says, and he, he writes it over here, he writes it in his commentary to Chumash as well. He says that uh, really, right, the murderer, whoever, even the murderer of Bermezid, would run, would, would escape, would run to the uh, Imreklat and would say that it was Shogeg. Okay, if that's the case, though, then we have to ask the question, why, why does the, uh, why is the Torah so concerned about the, the murderers of Bermezid? Why is the Torah giving extra, uh, extra dispensation, making it more easily accessible for these uh, Rotzrim to run away in, in a place where they actually aren't able to, they, they shouldn't be able to. 
That is the, that is one question. But maybe we could answer, and there are those who, who say the following. Remember, the Mishnah said that whether it was Mazid or whether it was Shogeg, whoever it was, the murderer would go to the Irmiklat first. It wouldn't necessarily stay there, but uh, but they would go there in the first instance. So if you're going to have an abundance of these cases, you need somewhere for these people to go, right? Before the before they get brought back to Beit Din. So maybe that's why uh, maybe that's why you have more of these cities. That's another that's another approach which is suggested. Tosfot says something very interesting. Have a look. The final Tosfot on Daftet Amud Bet. Okay, it's uh, near the end. It says the the Dibur Amatchil Begilad Shchichei Rotzchem. Short Tosfot there, just before uh, parallel with the end of the narrow lines in the Gemara. He says Perush Lahachi Yutzrachnu Larei Miklat Lefik Shehogim Mezid Beloedim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Mezamnan and Pundak Echad Kedamuina Nakama. So says Tosfot, he's invoking a, a Gemara, which we will see on the Yud Amud Bet. He said, Perush, Lahachius Rechul Arei Miklat. This is the reason why we need these extra Arei Miklat. Lefik Shehugim B'Mezid B'Loedim. What happens when somebody kills B'Mezid? So we know if there are witnesses in Hatra'a, then he gets put to death. What if there were no witnesses? Uh, uh, for whatever reason, the Beit Din cannot execute the punishment on him. So the Gemara tells us later on, the HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mezamnan Pundak Echad. That if there was a Rotsech Bemezid and there was a Rotsech Beshogeg, that a Ganesh Baruch who brings them together, he, what happens is he calls that the one is one is climbing up a ladder. He says the, the one who was uh, the one who was Rotsech Beshogeg be, be by accident is climbing up the ladder and he'll fall off the ladder and will accidentally kill the person you know, underneath. But the person underneath had actually been a Rotsech Bemezid and that he's getting his he's getting his punishment. In other words, if a person was meant to was meant to be put to death, but Beitin couldn't do it um, for whatever reason, for you know, on a technicality, so to speak. So Shamaim has got their own cheshbonot. Don't worry, they 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 work everything out. So when you have an accident, so it could be that when you have this uh, accidental death which takes place, it actually happened because the one who was killed. And he, again, it's not it's not saying that every time an accidental death happens that the person was uh, was chayv mita. Let's not let's not misunderstand. But what it is saying is that Shemaim works out cheshbonot that you have. Somebody deserved to die, so he'll die in an accident. And the person who killed him was uh, it happened accidentally, and that person will end up going into um will end up going into the Ermiklat. Okay, we'll understand a little bit better when we see it on Daf Yud. Could I just ask a question before you go ahead? Um yeah, yeah. the Gemara's answer about more murderers in, in Gilad is is a little strange in the sense that I mean, at the time that the, the Bnei Israel were entering the, the country, maybe that was true, but these are aiming clad were to be in existence for a very long time, not just at that moment. Is is the is the Chumash telling us that forevermore the, the rationale of having these three uh, uh, is because forevermore we're going to have more murderers in that area? Seems seems right. a little strange. Right. No, so, so, so it's a good question. The truth is it does seem a little strange. I mean, you could ask, you could ask even more than that, because it's not that right now there were murderers there because nobody lived there yet, right? It, 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 we talk, we're dealing with that pasuk, which we bring as proof, as in Sefer Oshea. This is going to be years later. So you could say, and I think it's the Ramban who addresses this point as well. He says, the Torah now is uh, is, is saying that there have to be these extra Arayim Niklat for the murderers that are taking place there. Not, you're asking, well, what if, what if at one point in the future it's not like that anymore? Is it still relevant? But But, but he says, even now, it's not yet relevant. It's what because of something that's going to happen in the future. That now it's it's been set aside. That there's going to be more more Arei Miklat. And I think the answer that Ramban gives is that that was you know the Cheshbonot of Shamayim. Meaning, if it was if if we were were deciding where to put them and whatever, then that would be one thing. But Akash Baruch knows knows what's going to happen. He knows where things will be, and that's he 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 has a way of of deciding it. Um, what will be. Sorry, Robert, yeah. Reuven and Gad showed that they weren't really interested in living on in the in Eretz Yisrael. They wanted the other side because it was better for their cattle and better for right. their future. Um, there were the different types of people, and it could be that if you live outside Eretz Yisrael, um, then the normal events which occur in the world occur there much more than in Eretz Yisrael. They haven't got so much of the tarot to keep them in line. 
Okay, yeah, fair, yeah, fair. So this is what I want to share with you, a beautiful interpretation on this, which is brought by Rav Nevenza. He's a Rav in the old city. He writes this in his Sichot and Parshat Shavua, in Parshat Masei. Um, and the way, the way he explains all of this is as follows. First of all, Tosfot, just and go back for a moment to the, uh, to the parish which Tosfot give, you'll see that their parish is a little bit difficult as well. Because what did Tosfot say? Again, we want to know why our understanding is that proportionally, geographically, however it is, but proportionally, there is an abundance of Arei Miklat in this area of Ever Hayaden. And the answer is because there are going to be more Rotschim, more Rotschim B'Mezid. But we said that's irrelevant because we're dealing with Rotschim B'Shogeg. So, so, um, so Tosfot said, no, many times it will happen that a, a murder will take place B'Shogeg, but really that is just Kadosh Baruch Hu sorting out former Cheshbonot, meaning one of them was already a Rotschim B'Mezid. And one of them was already a Rotschim B'Shogeg. Uh, but for whatever reason, it wasn't found out, it wasn't known, he never went into the Yermi Klat, and therefore this, this action takes place, and this Ratzach B'Shogeg then has to go into the, uh, uh, into the Yermi Klat. But you think about that story, what you're saying is, there's already been a Ratzach B'Shogeg that's taken place, and now it's going to take place again. So, me, meaning proportionally, the, the, it's the, the accidental deaths that took place were higher. Um, so Tosfos' answer is, 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 is somewhat unsatisfactory in that sense. So the way Rav Nevenso explains, he says the following. He says, you have to understand, when you live in a place whereby there is more murder and there are more violence and there are more of these uh, taking place, people become desensitized to the value of human life. People become desensitized and more accidents will happen because people are less careful because that is the power of the environment and that is how it and that is how it uh, how it influences everyone who lives there. People heard of the broken windows theory, so this is a uh, this thing very very interesting. It was made famous by Malcolm Gladwell in one of his books. It is disputed as to whether this was uh, really what happened. But essentially, when Rudy Giuliani was the mayor of New York, and he came up with this with this theory of uh, broken windows, which was to say, if you want to crack down and you want to prevent. You know, serious crime from happening. He said we have to crack down on on uh, every minor offense and every every uh, minor misdemeanor as well. And they said every time somebody there was vandalism or there was graffiti or whatever it was, they went and they 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 brought very 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 harsh punishments and um, cracked down on the offenders in that way. And ultimately, the sort of ripple effect was that uh, was that people started taking all forms of crime more seriously. Okay, there's interesting uh, stories that have been written about it. As I say, it's disputed as to whether that whether it, that was the reason in that instance or not. But um, the same principle, sort of, you know, the environment effects, when you're in a place where human life is not taken seriously, where all the time uh, people are not careful and, 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 and these, these uh, murders are taking place, then it ripples down and the effect is there are going to be more accidents because people are less careful, because people don't think about it, because people aren't sensitized to it. Okay, Why should it have been that way, continues Rav Nevenson, why should it have been that way that in the Gilad, in this area, that, that there were more murderers and people were less sensitive to the value of human life? He says, because look at why, look at what happened, why they're there in the first place. Right, Reuven and Gad come to Moshe Rabbeinu and they say, we don't want to go into Eretz Israel proper. We want to stay here on the other side. Why? Because of our cattle, because of our possessions, because of our wealth, essentially. And if you look in the Psukim, it's fascinating that the, the, the argument that takes place between uh, uh, Reuven and Gad and between Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Moshe Rabbeinu tells them, he says, you're going to stay here and everybody else is going to go out and fight. No, you have to come with us. You have to fight and then you can come back, etc. But essentially what they say is, they say, we want to stay here. We'll build, uh, we'll have pasture for our cattle and we'll build cities for our, ch for our children and our families. Moshe Rabbeinu, when he answers them back, he switches the order in those words. He says, you'll, you'll come and you'll fight with us, and then you'll come back. He says, and you can build cities for your families and for your cattle. Me, and again, and Chazal was super sensitive to this, in that the, the, there's uh, the message over here, Bnei Ruven and Bnei Gad maybe didn't even realize it. But what they were revealing was the order of priorities. They say, we're putting our economy first. We're putting that before our families. We're putting that before people. Again, for what starts off as such a, 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 a minor flaw, perhaps, but, but misaligned priorities ripples down and becomes 
um, become something, some, something much greater. So they already from the beginning show that the reason for settling this land, it's less important about what we're going to do with our people. It's less important what we'll be with our families, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay further away from the center of Kedusha. We'll be further away from the Mikdash. We'll be further away from the spiritual influence on uh, the Western side in Eretz Israel because of our cattle, our flocks, our economy, our money, etc. That is showing that that is less important. That ripples down into a into, into a sort of devaluing of of, uh, of human life itself, and that is why in that environment you had you had and that is why as a result of that you had more carelessness, and as a result of that you had uh, you had uh, more of these uh, the need for these are because accidental deaths, intentional deaths, etc. So that is a very very interesting uh, um, and, and and quite pertinent point which Rav Nevinsel makes about this idea. Of the Eretz Gilad being Akuvamida. Okay, so so uh, we're on now Daf Yud Amud Aleph at the top. So we said, Amar Biel Azar Shayu Okvin Larog Nefashot. Right, that we explain what Akuvamida means. Okay, continues the Gemara now in the third line. It says Umai Shna Mahai Gisa, Umai Gisa Demir Chaki. Right? What is the difference? Why is that? Why is it that from one side, Mahagiza, from this side, and, and, and from the other side, it's Merchaki, it is far. That from the middle, it is closer. In other words, we say when it said Vashilashta that you have the, the it's divided into three because you have the three Are Miklat, right, going from uh, north to south, but essentially the land is actually split into four. Because you have from the border to the first city, from the first to the second, to the second to the third, and from the third to the border, right? So if you are at the northern or the southern border, if you're living in those areas, you actually have further to go to one of the Aramei Klat than if you're in the middle, because you have half the distance from one, to, you can go to the one which is the north or south. So why is it that over there, uh, it's closer and over there, it's further away? Says the Gemara Ma'abai B'Shchem, Nami It says, no, Shchem, which is in the middle, was also... Uh, there were more. There were more um, murderers over there. And again, we, we could ask the same question in, in terms of what it means uh, um, if that's Bemezid versus versus really Bishogeg. It says Dichtev Ukechichei Ish Gedudim Chaver Koanim Chaver Koanim Derch Irtzachu Shchema. So it says that these uh, like dudim is like uh, you know it, it, it's it's a word uh, used in military context as well. You have these people get, going together like a chaver koanim. Chaver koanim is a group of koanim. Derech yitzchuk shchem. They'll go to murder towards uh, shchem. Okay. So the question is this pasuk also the next pasuk that's in that's in uh, Sefer Hoshea. Uh, it says my chaver koanim. What is the what is the uh, comparison? It's a group of Kohanim when it talks about people who go out to kill. Why are they compared to the Kohanim? Amar Rabbi Elazar, Shayum mitchabrin laharog nefashot, ka Kohanim alalu shemitchabrin lachlok trumot beveta granat. Okay, interesting comparison which the Navi uses, but he says it's, to, it's, it, it's meant to teach you that groups of people would band together, right? And this is how common it was uh, that they would band together to kill. Just like the Kohanim sort of band together to go and get the, the Trumot, right? The, the idea is you, you can imagine all the Kohanim coming to the Beta Granot, the threshing floor, that's where they have all the produce, coming to get their, their Truma from the Torah. We have a mitzvah of Truma that the farmer has to give a certain, uh, th th there's really, there's no amount for it given in the Torah, it can be anything, but a certain percentage of his, uh, of his crops is given to the Kohanim, that is their food. Uh, right, the Kohanim and the Levim, of course, don't have their own Nachala, so they're dependent on these on, the, on these Matanot in terms of their Parnasa, and there is no uh, there is no uh, obligation as to which coin you have to give to a person can decide whoever they want to give it to. So the Kohanim will get will band together to come and to get their Truma. So so too the situation was that they would uh, the people would band together to go and to murder. Um, now says the Gemara. The two Leica. So until now, we've said that we have the six cities. We have the three on the west and three on the east. But it says, really, are there only six Aramic Lat? The two Leica, or do we not have more? Vactive, Valem Titnu, Abaim, Vishtaim, Ir. It says you'll give them, you'll give the Leviim 42 cities. And the 42 cities of the Leviim 
are also uh, also serve as Aray Miklat. It's not just the uh, it's not just the six which are which are exclusively Aray Miklat, but the Aray Levim are uh, serve as Aray Miklat as well. So says the Gemara. Why, why does why does the Mishnah say we only have six because we really have another forty two? So Marabaye Alalu Kotot Bein Nadat Bein Sheloladat Halalu Nadat Kotot. Okay, he says Abayi, you know, these ones, meaning these six that we that we said uh, before, that which are the uh, you know exclusive Aray Miklat, it says these kotot ben adat ben sheloladat, meaning whether a person went there for this purpose or not, whether they realized it or not, that would uh, provide them protect. Again, kotot means that it provides one protection from the goel adam. So it says whether when a person is, if a person is inside. One of these six are miklat. It doesn't matter if he ran there for the sake of uh, being saved from the goel adam or not. He just happened to be there. There, the goel adam is not allowed to kill him. It says Rashi, ben ladat ben sheloladat. Right, four lines from the top, the end of the line in Rashi, ben ladat ben sheloladat, ben shebarach sham ladat klita. Whether a person ran there, fl- uh, fled there in order to uh, escape, ben uh, shelobarach sham ladat klita. Whether he didn't. Go there in order to get protection from the uh, Adam. She collected. He didn't know. He didn't uh, realize this was the Ermiklat. He didn't know this halacha. Whatever it is, um, that would still provide him with protection. However, these cities of the Leviim, if one went there, if one fled there for the sake of protection, then the, the halacha would apply. But if not, not. Okay. Now the Gemara goes in, it discusses a few of the cities which we've mentioned, um, asking uh, based on other Pesukim in Tanakh, how it could be uh, that these actually were a Miklat. They seem there are a different number of different difficulties. So it says, Hebron, near Miklatu. We mentioned that Hebron is one of the Arei Miklat. Doesn't it say that Chevron uh, was given to Kalev, right, as part of his uh, as part of his uh, Nachala. So how could it be that it was a uh, that it was actually an Irmiklat? Amar Abaye Parvada Dichtiv Etz Da'ir Vet Vet Chatzera Natnu LeKalev Ben Yufune. He says no. It means the Parvada, meaning sort of the outskirts of the city, these areas that are connected, but not the city itself. Those, that is what was given to Kalev, where it says it's Tehair, the field of the city, Bet and its courtyards, etc. Nanula Kalev ben Yifuneh. This word, by the way, we still have in modern Hebrew, right? Parvarim, you sort of talk about the outskirts, the, the, the periphery. Um, so that's that, that's uh, regarding regarding Hebron. What about Kadesh? Kadesh, which we mentioned also, is one of the Arim Miklat. It says Kadesh, Yom Miklat, the active. What's the what, what's going to be the difficulty here? It says Arei Mivtsar Hatzidim Tzov Achamat Vereket Vekinerat Etc. VeKadesh VeDrei Vein Chatzon. Here we have this pasuk right later on in Sefer Yoshua talking about the different cities, and it says calls them Arei Mivtsar. Arei Mivtsar means if you have a look in Rashi, um, Rashi just before maybe about ten lines down from the top of the page, VeArei Mivtsar. He says, Krachim Gdolim, these are large cities, Shahyu Benachalat Naftali, which were in the Nachala of Naftali, etc. One of them is meant that's mentioned is Kadesh. Okay. And the, so the Pasuk there tells us they are large cities. Why is that a contradiction on the fact that Kadesh was an Irmiklat? Because Vitanya, we have a brighter that says, Arim Halalu, Enosinotan Lotirin Ktanin, Velo Krachim Gdolim, El Ayarot Beinoniyot. These Arei Miklat, but Irim Alalu, Rashi points out, means uh, Arei Miklat. They are not, you know, small, very, very small sort of villages, very small cities. Tirin Ktanin, Rashi explains why. Tirin Ktanin, Lefish and Mezonot Metsu Yenshom. It's a very, very small place where it's going to be hard to get food and hard to get a livelihood. So that's not, a, a, the point is, these cities have to be self sustaining. If a person's going to run away there, he's going to have to find all of his needs and everything he, he, he Everything he needs to survive. So if it's Tirin Ketanin, it wouldn't work. Um, and also, it says that we don't make them Lot Tirin Ketanin v'lo Krachim Gdolim, not extremely large cities either. Again, says Rashi, Lot Krachim Gdolim, Shakol Nik Patsim Sham, these large places where everybody comes to meet, Shakol Nik Patsim Sham Tamid, 
Everybody goes there all the time. We're worried that if it's a really large city, it's a place where people come all the time, so that the Goel Adam is also going to come there. It's going to be easy for him to come, and he's going to wait there in ambush, and he's going to uh, and he's going to uh, trap him. So therefore, El Ayarot Beinoniot. They need to be, they need to be, uh, you know, in, in intermediate, sort of middle-sized cities, not too small, not too big. So, so, but it says that Kadesh was one of the Arem Yiftzah, was one of these large cities. So that seems to be a contradiction. Amar of Yosef Tate Kadesh Habe. Says Rav Yosef, there were two cities called Kadesh. One was this, this uh, Irm Yiftzah, and one was the Irm Yiftzah. Uh, Amar of Ashi, Kegon Slikum, the Akra de Slikum. Says Rav Ashi, we find... Other places, you have there's a city that is called Slikum, and there's a city which is called Akra de Slikum. They have nearly the same name, but uh, d- different types of cities. So too regarding Kadesh. So now, now a little bit more of detail about these uh, conditions in the Arei Miklat themselves. So again, we're near the end of the first line, which gets a little bit wider in the Gemara. Dafyur Amudalif. Gufa. Says the Gemara, three words from the end of the line. Gufa is always right. We've, we've, we've quoted something, and now we're going back to that statement or that brighter or that uh, uh, statement of an Amora, whatever it is, and we're analyzing it further. So Gufa, so we go back to the statement which said, Arim alalu, eino sinotan lotirin ksanin v'lokrachin gdolim el ayerot beinoniot. Right, we said we don't, uh, the Aramic clats can't be too small, they can't be too large either. V'ein moshivinotan ela b'makom mayim. They can only be in an area where there is uh, where there is water. And if there is no water, then we bring water there. What do you mean if there is? We just said they have to be in a in a place near a water source. So what do you mean if there is no water? So says Rashi. Right, we're talking about these are the cities of the Leviim, which were how were they how were they allocated? They were allocated through the Gora. Through uh, the, the lottery, if they happen to be in a land in a Nachala, in an area where there was no water, so violem amot ma'im, they brought channels of water. Achrechen mina from the from the uh, from the rivers which were further away. But ideally, they should be near the near the river itself. Again, the point is that the city should be uh, should be self sustaining. Ve'en moshivinotan elab makom shvakin, ve'en moshivinotan. Okay, so they need to be near a place of makom shvakim, a marketplace, says Rashi. Shvakim shim umazonot liknot, so that there'll be food there, that people will be able to uh, to, to buy food. And also, in a place where, where there's people, in a place where people live, says Rashi. Makom uchlosin, shayuk falim, v'yishuv smuchim nem. There are different villages and settlements surrounding them. Um, in other words we don't want to, the point is that there, there, there are there is other population these cities are not isolated so if they were isolated that the Goel Adam is going to come along with his army and with his legions and ambush the city no this way there are people outside there are people around and if they see them coming they can they, they can uh, they, they'll they'll have prior warning Um And if it happened, the uh, surrounding populations were nitmatu, meaning there were less uh, people, people left, or, or, or they weren't there anymore. So so we bring other people, uh, we we bring people to, to live there. Also, the residents, uh, if they... Um, they moved out, right? There were no residents within the city itself. So we bring bring to come into and to populate the city and to keep it uh, keep it populated in that way. Now we have an interesting machloket. The ein mochrin bayen lo klei zayin velo klei mitzuda. Divrei Rabbi Nachemia vechachamim matirin. Is one allowed to sell weapons in the ir miklat? So says Rabbi Nehemia says no, you can't sell any sort of weapons or any sort of implements you could use for traps. Um, and Chachamim say you can. So says Rashi, Klei Zayin, Shelo Yikne Goel Adam Sham Zayin We don't want to sell weapons 
so that the the uh, goel adam, if he comes to the city, will be able to buy a weapon and to kill the uh, kill the rotzach. Uh, right, you could say, what difference does it make if you're selling weapons in the city or not? If he's going to bring from, uh, uh, he could just bring bring uh, himself from wherever he came from. So says Rashi, no. If he's going to bring, if he's going to come in and he's you know carrying his weapons around, then people will know that. He, so therefore, he's going to come without the weapons, and therefore, if you don't sell them, you don't sell them inside, then it's uh, um, he, he won't be able to come and kill the person. All these things. Again, to make the city more uh, safe and, and, and protected. Or these uh, traps which you use to kill uh, to kill animals. He says those you don't sell, you don't sell there either. Um, okay, let's just let's just finish this off in the in the Gemara and that will end. So that, so that was a machloket between uh, Rabbi Nachemia and Chachamim. V'shavin she'en posin b'tochan metzudot v'en mafshilin b'tochan chavalim. Right, and they both agree that you don't uh, open uh, traps, tra- traps in there, and you don't uh, put um, ropes and things, so that it's going to be, which would, which would make it easier for the goel adam to come and to use them and to uh, and to uh, kill a person that we that we avoid. Okay, let's we'll stop there. So we're on daf yud amud aleph, about a third way down. We'll carry on tomorrow, as uh, as per most people's request. We're now. Three consecutive days. So Monday, Tuesday, we- yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That will be the share. And everyone should have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. You too. Thank you.